ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋ ಜಯಂ ಧೀರೆ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯಶೋ ಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿರುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿತಿ ಮಮ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿ ಮಿಂದ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರಂಡಿತ ಮೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ನಮ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮೇ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓಕೆ ಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಮಧರ್ಮಣೋ ಗುಣೈರೇಟೈ ಪರಿಸಂಶುದ್ಧ ಆಶಯ ಪುರುಷಸ್ಯಾಂಚಸಾಭ್ಯೇತಿ ಶುತ ಮಾತ್ರ ಗುಣ ಹಿ ಮಾಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಫುಲ್ಲಿ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಫೈಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡೆಂಟಲ್ ಆಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಮ್ಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ simply by hearing my name or hearing of my transcendental quality um, so in the previous verse all these qualities uh, should always hear about spiritual matters should always utilize this time chanting holy name of lord behavior straight forward simple not envious friendly to everyone avoiding company of people who are not spiritually advanced now you know all these with all, when all these uh, qualities transcendental attributes fully developed meaning one is fully qualified meaning he has fully all these attributes and his consciousness is completely purified man is immediately attracted simply by hearing my name so when somebody says krishna our heart should throb this is the meaning of immediately attracted mm, and hearing of my transcendental quality in the beginning of this instruction the lord explained to his mother that mad guna shruta shruti matrena simply by hearing mad guna shruti matrena simply by hearing of the name quality form etc who is supreme lord one is immediately attracted but this is only when we are purified not when we are pure if not when we are impure when we are not purified we sleep in bhagavatam class we sleep in bhagavad gita class that is a indication that we are not purified but when we are of course it doesn't mean that if we stop sleeping in bhagavatam or bhagavad gita class we become completely purified but at least now we are waking up the other state was in complete ignorance now we have at least started to wake up and as we continue to hear then purification happens automatically shrinvata swada shrinvata swata pakata krishna punya shravana kirtana dadayanta sto yabaddani vidunoti surut satam shrinvatam swata swakata krishna simply by hearing krishna katha ha all modes of passion and ignorance are cleared which is purification so we can understand how much we have we are pure by seeing how much in our lives we are living in goodness how much our life is free of passion and ignorance be it whatever day from morning till evening kaya vacha manasa how much i am in passion and ignorance and i won't say more than goodness how much i am in krishna consciousness so bhai shruti matrena mad guna shruti matrena so we have to hear very attentively actually he krishna you know shrimad bhagavatam 
And Vyasadeva selected specifically all the glorious pastimes of Krishna. And the idea was that actually Srimad Bhagavatam is equivalent to the Vedas. By simply giving oral reception to Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna becomes established firmly in the heart of the devotee. Nothing else needs to be done, really. That is why we have to focus on Bhagavata Vidhi. Unfortunately, many devotees are not attracted to Shavanam. They simply engage in service, service, service. But that service will not achieve perfection without quality Shavanam. Unless we get attracted to Krishna, Tattvataha. See, because Krishna, actually this, you know, when I play this, Kirtan, before we start our class, so some devotee has made the slides, pictures. Right, I mean, it just, I mean, I keep thinking, saying that how many in, people are actually able to understand the Tattva of Radha and Krishna. Because Tattva of Radha and Krishna is not something which is natural. We cannot naturally understand Radha and Krishna in the sense that it is so exalted that it's very difficult to understand. Of course, if somebody is like so sincerely, completely dedicated to service, then yeah, Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam, Krishna will reveal everything from within that person's heart. But otherwise, without Shavanam, there is no way we can actually understand really Radha Krishna. We cannot understand. And I'm more, uh, you know, here expressing my concern towards language, other language devotees, mostly. You know, people who are English speaking or even Hindi speaking to a great extent, there are speakers, preachers who are specifically Kannada. They don't have quality shavanam. So, Madhguna Shruti Matra and actually this, I am emphasizing this because this is the crux. I have told this multiple times. Uh, if you get to reading Srimad Bhagavata more than two hours a day, we will really, I mean, we can see we can see the actual impact. We can see how powerful Srimad Bhagavatam is. How powerfully it cleanses our heart. Very, very powerful process. A person becomes fully qualified with all transcendental qualities by following the rules and regulations. Again, again, Prabhupada is highlighting rules and regulations which we discussed. For example, we are talking about Seva Prada. We should avoid all this. You know, it's a very simple thing. We are simply blocking our progress by doing things that we just think like, ah, I like doing this. But it's not going to help progress. It's not going to help our progress. We have developed certain unnecessary qualities by material association. See, these qualities have to be removed. And by following the above process, we become free from that contamination. What is the process? by Shravanam, Kirtanam, and by following rules and regulations. All these unnecessary qualities. See, we have unnecessary qualities. We want to continue those unnecessary qualities in Bhakti. That is Mishra Bhakti. We should understand that the unnecessary qualities should be stopped. Now, our approach is, okay, as long as my unnecessary qualities are being allowed in ISKCON, I am happy. But that's not the process. And we call this doubt hailing, generally. Doubt hailing means whatever nonsense I'm attached to, I want to somehow bring that into Krishna consciousness and then I'm happy. But well, that's completely material. That's completely material. It's a very, very early neophyte stage, early, very early stage of bhakti, where the center is not Krishna at all. So we should understand that the unnecessary, first of all, we should understand which, what are those unnecessary qualities. And then we should, the, the whole process of bhakti is to remove 
This is contamination. The unnecessary qualities are contamination. And the whole process of bhakti is to become free from contamination. But it's easy yet tough. It's easy if we just give up. It's tough if we hold on to our unnecessary qualities. This is the challenge. So whether we want to hold on to useless anarthas or we want to give up is our decision, our free will. But the process is very powerful. There's no complaining about the process. To develop transcendental qualities, as explained in the previous verse, one must become free from these contaminated qualities. Simple. Very simple, right? It's not a complicated process. You want to become free? You want to develop transcendental qualities? Become free from contaminated qualities. For that, what we should we do? Samanam Kirtanam, follow rules, regulations. Simple process. There's no complication at all. It's a very simple, straightforward process. Yatha vatharato granam avrunte gandha ashayat evam yogaratam cheta atmanam vikariyat As the chariot of air carries an aroma from its source and immediately catches the sense of smell. Similarly, one who constantly engages in devotion service in Krishna consciousness can catch the Supreme Soul who is equally present everywhere. He can catch him. The breeze carrying a pleasant fragrance from a garden of flowers at once captures the organ of smell. So one's consciousness, saturated with devotion, is saturated, soaking, absorbed, and at once capture the transcendental existence of the Supreme Person of Godhead, who in his Paramatma feature is present everywhere, even in the heart of every living being. Meaning, as soon as we see anything and everything in this material world, we simply see Krishna's energy. We simply see Krishna as Paramatma and his energies. That's all. That person is completely in transcendence. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Person of Godhead is Kshetragna, present within the body. But he is also simultaneously present in every other body. Even he is present in the atom. Since the individual soul is present only in a particular body, he is all heard when another individual does not cooperate with him. The super soul, however, is equally present everywhere. Individual souls may disagree, but the super soul being equally present in every body is called unchanging or avikari. The individual soul, when fully saturated with Krishna consciousness, can understand the presence of the super soul. Now we can't understand. We only know as knowledge, but we cannot understand that there is super soul. When we are fully saturated with Krishna consciousness, then we can understand the presence of super soul. It is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita that Bhaktiya Mama Vijanati, person saturated with devotional service in full Krishna consciousness, can understand the personality of Godhead, either a super soul or the supreme person. Am Sarveshu Bhuteshu Bhutatma Vastita Sada Tam Avagnaya Mam Martyaha Puruter Cha Vidambanam. I am present in every living entity as the super soul. If someone neglects or disregards that super soul everywhere and engages himself in the worship of the deity in the temple, that is simply imitation, meaning we don't respect other jivas. It is simply an imitation. So this is very, very important. Especially this, this is for, of course, I mean, it is applicable for everybody, but especially those in uh, you know, preachers, leaders, it's mostly applicable for them. Mm. We have to respect everybody, but still we have to do our service, which is to guide them, which is to show the right direction, which is to show right and wrong. Everything, but still in a very humble position. Mm -hmm. Respecting every jiva. In purified consciousness or Krishna consciousness, one sees the presence of Krishna everywhere. Therefore, if one only engages in deity worship in the temple, does not consider other living entities, then is the lowest grade of devotional service. I have seen many times interaction between devotees is in singular, ekavachan. And they are not like 
buddies or anything. So this, all these things should be avoided. Uh, we should respect every jiva. And otherwise, it's the lowest grade. One who worships the deity in the temple and does not show respect to others is a devotee on the material platform. In the lowest stage of devotional service, a devotee should try to understand everything in relationship with Krishna and try to serve everything in that spirit. To serve everything means to engage everything in the service of Krishna. Every moment, engage everything in the service of Krishna. If a person is innocent, does not know his relationship with Krishna, an advanced devotee should try to engage him in the service of Krishna and also tell him about Sambandha Gyan. One who is advanced in Krishna consciousness can engage not only the living being but everything in the service of Krishna like Prabhupada showed. We can engage everything, everyone in the service of Krishna if we are an expert. There's one uh, person who actually brings prasadam for us every Sunday to Hulimau from temple. He's a Muslim. Right? And he's engaging in Krishna service. So he'll get benefit. So somehow everyone and everything should be engaged in the service of Krishna. So main point here is we should not neglect super soul. So one is, of course, you know, we many of us are, it's easy for us to respect other devotees, but we disrespect non-devotees, um, which is not good, which is also the same thing, right? We neglect or disregard the super soul present in the jiva. So we have to respect everybody. Respecting everybody doesn't mean associating with everybody. Respecting can be even from a distance, but we respect. Mm. Association is with devotees who are advanced, more advanced than us. That is association. Everything else is, yeah, with equals, there's a relationship of friendship. But there also, there should be exchange of understanding how, uh, you know, how to make progress, what the other person thinks, etc., etc. So it's all about making progress. Yomam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Santam Atmanam Ishwaram Itwar Chambhajate Maudhyad Basmanyeva Juhoti Saha. One who worships the deity of Godhead in the temples but does not know that the Supreme Lord as Paramatma is situated in every living entity's heart must be in ignorance and is compared to one who offers oblations into ashes. Same concept. It is stated clearly here in the Supreme Person of Godhead in his plenary expansion of Super Soul is present in all living entities. The entity, living entities have 84 lack different kinds of bodies and the supreme person of Godhead is living in every body both as the individual soul and as the super soul he is also as the individual soul because individual soul is also part and parcel of the supreme lord so supreme lord is present both as individual soul and super soul since the individual soul is part and parcel of the supreme lord in that sense the lord is living in every body and as super soul the lord is also present as a witness in both cases the presence of God in every living entity is essential. Therefore, persons who profess to belong to some religious sect but who do not feel the presence of the Supreme Person of Godhead in every living entity and everywhere else are in the mode of ignorance. So, Prabhupada is basically talking about other religions which kill animals. They are in the mode of ignorance. If without this preliminary knowledge of the Lord's omnipresence, one simply attaches himself to the rituals in a temple, church or mosque. It is as if he were offering butter into ashes rather than into the fire. One offers sacrifices by pouring clarified butter into a fire and chanting Vedic mantras. But even if there are Vedic mantras and all conditions are favorable, if the clarified butter is poured on ashes, then such a sacrifice will be useless. In other words, a devotee should not ignore any living entity. Clearly, this is the sum and substance. The devotee must know that in every living entity, however insignificant he may be, even in an ant, God is present. And therefore, every living entity should be kindly treated and should not be subjected to any violence. Talking about mosquito killing. Clear. It's very, very clear. In the mosquito, do we see Paramatma? <laughs> do we even see Atma? <coughs> uh, 
this is <coughs> so we have to raise our consciousness in modern civilized societies slaughterhouses are regularly maintained and supported by a certain type of religious principle but without knowledge of the presence of god in every living entity any so called advancement of human civilization either spiritual or material is to be understood as being in the mode of ignorance that's all and so we have to see the presence of super soul in every jiva in every jiva literally It's such a high consciousness, actually. You know, we are so much in ignorance that we just full of ourselves. That's all, or we are fully in illusion. We just seeing everything is material. And so to raise this consciousness, we have to be, we have to try and be Krishna conscious every moment. You know, every action, every thought of ours, we should evaluate to see: Am I Krishna conscious? Am I not Krishna conscious? द्विशतपर काये मानिनो भिन्न दर्शिन ऊते शुभ वैर से न मन शांति मृछति वन ऑफर्स मी रेस्पेक्ट बट इज एनवियस द बॉडीज ऑफ अदर्स देर फॉर अ सेपरेटिस्ट नेवर अटेन्स पीस ऑफ माइंड बिकॉज ऑफ इज इनिमिकल बिहेवियर टू वर्ड अदर लिविंग एंटिटीज तो दिस डिवोटी विल नेवर अचीव पीस ऑफ माइंड तो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एक्चुअली in this verse two phrases bhuteshu baddha vairasya inimical towards others and dvishata parakaye envious of another's body are significant one who is envious of or inimical towards others never experiences any happiness a devotee's vision therefore must be perfect he should ignore bodily distinctions and should see only the presence of part and parcel of the supreme lord meaning the atma and the lord himself parmatma we should ignore bodily distinctions of course ignore bodily distinctions doesn't mean that if you are on the bodily platform sometime uh, some devotee said okay why should we distinguish between male and female we are all spiritual uh, we are not so exalted we are not so exalted so that way we will recognize some basic distinctions but uh, some lack of di some disqual we don't see disqualifications through because somebody has a certain type of body somebody is born in a certain country Etc. Etc. And we don't do. We don't see that. That is the vision of a pure devotee. The bodily expression of a particular type of living being is always ignored by the devotee. Many a time, some devotees are materially. I mean, because they are so tinged materially, uh, they behave in a very awkward manner. Uh, and it's a big challenge for preachers. Mm. So somehow we have to we have to try and help everybody. Uh, but also like i keep saying here also has to be a willingness for the other person to take help that is a key thing but yeah in general bodily expression particular type of living entity is ignored mm, so everybody acts in different ways and a preacher has to take everybody together that's a challenge prabhupada said always cooperate with each other it is expressed here in that the lord is always eager to deliver the conditioned souls who have been encaged within material bodies Devotees are expected to carry the message or desire of the Lord to such conditioned souls, and enlighten them, enlighten them with Krishna consciousness. Everybody is a devotee. Every devotee should do this. Thus, they may be elevated to transcendental spiritual life, and the mission of their lives will be successful. This is the desire of the Lord. So we have to fulfill the desire of the Lord, which means that we have to help distribute this message of Krishna consciousness. Of course, it is not possible for living entities who are lower than human beings, but human human society. It is feasible that all living entities can be enlightened with Krishna consciousness. Even living entities who are lower than human can be raised to Krishna consciousness by other methods. For example, Shivananda Sena, great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, delivered a dog by feeding him prasada. Distribution of prasada, remnants of footsteps offered to the Lord, even to the ignorant masses of people and to animals. Give such living entities the chance for elevation to Krishna consciousness. So we should never refuse opportunity to give prasadam to anybody. Many times there's a lot of discussion happening, saying that mm, should we allow people who come directly at prasadam time? Of course we should. Who are we to not? I mean, Krishna is the giver of mercy, 
jivas are there to receive mercy we are just postmen we can't suddenly start scrutinizing and saying this person is allowed that person is not allowed no no conditions give prasadam to anybody and everybody even to animals so actually it happened that the same dog when met by lord chaitanya at puri was liberated from the material condition went to vaikuntha it is especially mentioned here that the devotee must be free from all violence jiva himsa jiva himsa otherwise we can't make progress so this jiva himsa includes being rude to other human beings being harsh abusing not respecting all this is part of jiva himsa and if we are on this platform of course all of us have certain bad karma certain people in our lives uh, who are in our fallen state we look at them as sources of irritation for us it's true of everybody literally everybody except for those very really simple uh, you know souls without false ego i know a few who will not have any such but most people have such people in their lives because that and we it's it's just our past karma that we look at that person and feel everything and anything that person says or does is irritating to me and because we are not tolerant ourselves we become irritated we become we speak harshly we deal with them not very in vaishnava manner this is jiva himsa and we won't make progress lord chaitanya has recommended that a devotee not commit violence to any living entity sometimes the question is raised that since vegetables also have life and devotees take vegetable food steps isn't that violence firstly however taking some leaves twigs or fruit from a tree or plant does not kill the plant besides that jiva himsa means that since every living entity has to pass through a particular type of body according to his past karma although every living entity is eternal he should not be distributed he should not be disturbed in his gradual evolution a devotee has to execute the principles of devotion service exactly as they are and he must know that however insignificant the living entity may be lord is present within him and devotee must realize this universal presence of the lord so one is propad is saying you know killing animals is different from taking some vegetables and fruits does it not kill the plant and of course we know that because it's offered to krishna the karma is removed and so we should not prevent any jiva's progress Mm. Mm. so by killing animals we are preventing their progress so we should not disturb their evolution and but we should still follow shastra which says still says jeeva jeeva se jeevanam and that food of food for human beings is vegetarian you would must realize this universal presence of the lord okay we'll stop here any questions comments hari krishna prabhu can i yeah. share something yes mataji please prabhu ji long many years back when we did the the brindavan uh, parikrama one dog you know when in the morning we did the brindavan parikrama and then we we had to leave to mathura the next day by foot so one dog uh, did the parikrama with us and in the evening we don't know where he went and exactly in the morning he joined us <laughs> and prabhu and full brindavan parikrama he was there he used to sleep outside the tent and one plate of one chirasi kos you know he did the complete brindavan parikrama na chirasi kos ka brindavan kar <laughs> and ek plate prasadam subare rakha di rakhte the one <laughs> plate in the evening and okay. when after when he came back to brindavan i mean like uh, outside the temple he paid his obeisances and where he disappeared he Uh, we did not know <laughs> but uh, i mean there's the, i mean he must be some some soul which i don't know what it was but and he used to be front. in the front like you know leading 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 yeah. leading the uh, yatra yeah yeah you know. so actually i mean in vrindavan especially it's even more uh, this one right because the propa says the dogs all the animals there are all devotees who done some mistakes in their previous life so krishna has mercifully given them some punishment but has not taken him out, taken them out of vrindavan so they will complete they will they after and, their punishment is over they'll go back and and prabhu yeah. should give, give gave him any food other food you know he would not <laughs> it had to be prasadam yeah. in the plate only then Absolutely. he would uh, he would honor it otherwise yeah. he would not 
Yeah. I mean, there are certain Amazing. things when you see, only when you see, you could believe it. Uh, mm. And one more Very thing, nice. Prabhu, like uh, you said, um, Prashadam, na, this Muslim person carries. Mm. I, I, Sunday, my drivers don't come. So, you know, we don't like Prabhu driving because mm. half the time I'm also in the... So we call a call driver. There's one mm. particular driver called Ali. He's, he's a Muslim. Mm. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, like he came to your place. So, Prabhu, like if he comes, he will honor Prashadam. He'll take Prashadam to his house. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, okay, uh, okay, I remember him, yeah. Yeah, uh, like, you know, nice. so, so and, but so many a times other devotees, other Muslim drivers, they don't, they don't do it. Yeah, yeah, but this are. person, yeah, <laughs> so, we, they don't even like us with, uh, you know, like they'll say, Achaman. man, you know, they do come, but, but this person, so that must be some pa good karma of his yeah, purpose so that yeah. he honors Prasad and he drives us. So, like, yeah, yeah, that. absolutely. If he's serving Vaishnavas, then he'll get more yeah. mercy. Yeah. Nice. And then, you know, he says, anytime, you know, don't call somebody I'll, to the temple. I'll come. You pay me Very whatever nice. you want. Also. Very nice. I'm so fortunate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thank, you, thank you, Mataji. Thank, thank you. Mataji. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, no, no, like when you nice. said, it just came up, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, everybody. Tanvatu. Okay. Anything else? Anybody has anything else to share? Okay, thank you very much. Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai vaata kalpa dar pishta kapa singh dev jata di lana Hare Krishna.